Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us again today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for wanting to be with us. And we ask now that you would teach us uh, how to exhibit brother, brotherly love in the way that we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. That's 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. Verse 9 reads, Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you're doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more, to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your own hands as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. Now, our subject for today is, uh, no, let's, let's kind of uh, make it uh, simple for us. Our subject for today is Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Philadelphia there is derived from uh, the word philia, which means brotherly love. Now we cannot truthfully declare to love God whom we have not seen while hating our brothers or sisters that we see daily. Love itself is an action word, just as the word faith. Each without works is dead or without life or movement or expression. Love is seeing a need and doing something to meet that need. Now you've heard that talk is cheap. That means it's easy to see a wrong and just talk about it, but do nothing uh, to right that wrong. To only talk about injustice or wrongs is to be aware of, it, uh, aware of it and choose to do nothing. You might recall that our first requirement or point for practicing brotherly love was given on last week, uh, which was honest evaluation. And then we went on and broke that down, that text down into not only honest evaluation, but faithful cooperation. And the third one was loving participation. Now this week, we're picking up where we were last week, and we're going to look at another requirement for practicing brotherly love, which is walk in honesty. Walk in honesty. Uh, verse 11 and 12 talks all about this. Now, the word in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 12, that is translated honestly is our, in our authorized version, carries the meaning of becomingly or in an appropriate way. It is translated decently in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40, which says, let all things be done decently and in order. The emphasis is on the believer's witness to those who are outside uh, the Christian fellowship, them that are without. That's a familiar term uh, describing uh, unbelievers. Christians not only have the obligation to love one another, 
but also to be a good testimony to the people of the world, those that are without or outside of the fellowship. The reason for this is this is how we can truly be in the world, but not of the world by being a living sacrifice or a living testimony. Paul's great concern was that the Thessalonians believers would earn their own wages and not become freeloaders, depending on the support of other uh, believers and unbelievers. Paul says in verse 11 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says, make it your ambition. And this is the NIV version. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Now, this seems like a paradox. If you're ambitious, your life will probably not be quiet. But the emphasis is on quietness of mind and heart, the inner peace that enables all believers to be sufficient through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul did not want the saints running around creating problems as they earn their daily bread. For the most part, the Greeks despised manual labor. So uh, how they live, how the church, the Thessalonians and the believers lived among the Greeks was important, especially with the manner in which they worked or didn't work. Most of the work among the Greeks were done by slaves. And Paul, of course, was a tent maker and he was careful in Thessalonica to set the example of hard work. You can see uh, this in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 3, verse 6 through 12. Don't have time to read, me, read it all, but I gave you the verses and now it's time for you to look it up. You can hit pause and then go uh, on and look it up and then come back. Now, unfortunately, some of the new believers in the church misunderstood the doctrine of Christ's return and gave up their jobs to wait for his coming. This means that they were supported by other Christians, some of whom may not have had sufficient funds for their own families. It also meant that these fanatical people could not pay their bills, and therefore they lost their testimony with the unsaved merchants. Too often, Christians might, uh, and I might add astute Christians, might not uh, uh, be good stewards of what the Lord has loaned them, and they overspend or waste and they waste actually what doesn't belong to them. The, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. In other words, everything, everybody belong to the Lord. So how easy is it to purchase things that we don't need with money that we don't have? Especially, uh, on things like uh, 4th of July, buying fireworks and stuff. Man, people, a person can spend a lot of money on fireworks on 4th of July that goes like that. And especially on Christmas. Spending money that they don't have on things that they don't need. And then they lose not only their credit opportunities, but also we lose our Christian witness. Now, if therefore you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous mammon, the Bible says this is money, who will entrust you with true riches? You can find that in Luke chapter 16, verse 11, especially the New American Standard Version that I was reading. Uh, 
churches and Christians who defend their belief but do not pay their bills have no belief to defend in reality. Now the third and uh, uh, well, uh, the, 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 the last requirement for practicing uh, brotherly love is mind your own business and work with your own hands. Mind your own business and work with your own hands. This was what Paul commanded them. He didn't say if you feel like it, if you want to, but he commanded them to work with their own hands and mind their own business. Idle people spend their time interfering with the affairs of others and getting themselves and others into trouble. We hear that some among you are idle. This is what, this is what Paul was hearing. They are not busy. And if you're not busy, then you must be a busy body. But let none of you suffer as a busybody in other men's matter, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15. Believers who are about the, their father's business, based upon Luke chapter 2, verse 49, do not have the time or the desire to meddle in the affairs of others. Unfortunately, even a Bible class can become an opportunity for gossip if we're not careful or a substitute for true Christian service. As believers, we must be careful in our own relationship with those that are without. In other words, non-believers. It requires spiritual grace and wisdom to have a uh, contact without contamination and to be different without being judgmental and proud. Can I say that again? It requires spiritual grace and wisdom to have contact without contamination with the world or unbelievers and to be different without being judgmental and proud. D.L. Moody put it this way. It's wrong to be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. We must strive to walk in wisdom towards them that are outside of the church. If we lack this spiritual wisdom, we will do more harm than good. And we are saved that others might be saved by our testimony, the way we live. There are several good reasons why Christians should work and, uh, and not the least of which is to provide for their own families. That's an excellent reason. But also, if unsa unsaved people have to work and pay their bills, why should Christians be exempt? And then we also work in order to be able to give to those that have needs, according to Ephesians chapter four, verse 28. But if any would not work, neither should he eat. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse 10. Work is not a curse. It is a blessing. God gave Adam work to do in the Garden of Eden. It is the toil and sweat of work that belongs to the curse and not the work itself. As we review this section that we've gone over today, we can see how practical and helpful the Christian walk really is. The obedient Christian will have a holy life by abstaining from sexual sin 
will have a harmonious life by loving the brethren and an honest life by working with his hands and not meddling in the affairs of others. When unsaved people see Christ magnified in this kind of life, they will either oppose it with envy or desire to have it for themselves. And either way, God is glorified. James chapter four, verse eight says, draw near to, the, to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's the English Standard Version. And then uh, John chapter 12, verse 32 says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. So the way we live, the way we practice brotherly love among one another, and in front of those that are outside of the church is very important. It's our way to lift him up, to lift Jesus up. That's the main business that the church has, lifting up Jesus. We lift up Jesus by walking and living as Jesus lived. We lift Jesus up by being a witness of him. We lift him up by telling the age old story of why we owe him our all. And it is because he died one Friday on an old rugged cross. They buried him, but early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. That's why I love the song, Jesus Paid It All. It goes something like this. I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness. Watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone came and changed the leopard spots and it melted the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. He washed my sins away. And when before the throne I stand, in him complete. Jesus died, my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Let us pray. Our heavenly father, we thank you so much for your word. We ask that you would cause it to come alive within us that we would truly become uh, Philadelphians in the way that we put to practice brotherly love, that we won't be just hearers, but we will become doers of your word as well. And that the way we live can become edifiable to the body of Christ. And it would become a drawing tool for Jesus to use to draw those that are outside of the church to himself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that uh, you will be blessed by this message. Uh, and uh, don't forget to uh, practice social distancing while we look like things are clearing up some, but let's not, let's not jump too fast. Uh, and uh, wear your mask. Masks have been proven to to be uh, an instrument that will help, that will go a long ways towards keeping us safe. So until next time, may God keep you and may God bless you. Bye-bye.